Tonight, a detailed and disturbing report from the Michigan Attorney General's office naming names in the sex abuse investigation involving the Catholic Diocese of Kalamazoo. Thanks for joining us on News Channel 3. I'm Andy Dominiani. And I'm Jessica Hardhorn. The more than 100-page report details sexual abuse allegations involving nearly two dozen priests within the Diocese of Kalamazoo. And other employees, some of those accusations dating back to 1950. News Channel 3's Princess Shawnee Steverson is joining us live in studio now. And Princess, you've been reading this report all day. It says it's part of a long-running investigation happening statewide. Mm -hmm. Yes, Andy and Jessica, unfortunately, that is the hard truth that a lot of people in the Kalamazoo Diocese uh, Church are facing right now. A.G. Nestle's report on sexual abuse allegations towards the Diocese of Kalamazoo is the third of seven clergy allegations in Michigan. Now, the first was in Marquette and the second was in Gaylord. The Attorney General's office has been working to pursue criminal charges against the alleged sexual misconduct of priests in our area and more since October of 2018. The Psalms tell us that it is better to trust in the Lord than to, than to trust in men, and we see how true this is. These are just a few of the sheets inside Attorney General Dana Nessel's 144-page report documenting decades of sexual abuse allegations towards the Diocese of Kalamazoo. Cases of sexual abuse and assault are thoroughly reviewed, and that whenever we are able to pursue criminal charges, we do so relentlessly. Bishop Edward Losey for the Diocese of Kalamazoo said the allegations are heartbreaking. For any way in which we have failed you, the faithful who come to Mass Sunday after Sunday, I am deeply sorry. At this time, A.G. Nessel's report does not criminally charge anyone with sexual assault or sexual abuse because there wasn't enough evidence or the statute of limitations has ran out. Her report rather highlights the fact that she and her office have been and are continuing to investigate into the year's worth of allegations dating back all the way to 1950. I wish to confirm that no priest identified in the Attorney General's report is currently in active ministry. In the report for Kalamazoo, 24 adults have been accused of sexual misconduct. 19 of them were priests. 12 were ordained or incarnated by the Diocese of Kalamazoo. And I must note that, of course, a, a criminal charge is merely an allegation, and a defendant is presumed innocent unless and until proven guilty. Two of the men named in the report have been charged by A.G. Nessel's office. Father Jacob Vellian, a priest at St. John the Evangelist Parish in Benton Harbor. He was charged in May of 2019 on two counts of rape. He died in December of 2022. And Father Brian Stanley, a priest at St. Margaret's Catholic Church in Otsego. News Channel 3 was in the courtroom when Stanley was charged in 2019. Was sentenced in January of 2020 to 60 days incarceration and five years of probation on one count of attempted false imprisonment. Stanley pled guilty in January of 2020 to immobilizing a teenage boy by wrapping him tightly in plastic wrap. The report says, quote, it covered his eyes. Father Stanley cut holes in the cellophane for him to breathe, followed by noting he could only mumble yes or no and shake his head because his arms were on top of his chest and he was wrapped tightly in the cellophane. Father Stanley left the child alone in the janitor's closet for hours before letting him out back in 2013. A.G. Nessel credited Bishop Losey and the Diocese of Kalamazoo for their cooperation in their years-long investigation, which is nowhere from being over. Not only does the report talk about the allegations of sexual misconduct regarding children, it also talks about that of adults. Coming up on News Channel 3 at 6, although these are allegations, we'll take a look into how the Diocese of Kalamazoo and A.G. Nestle have worked overtime to gather their evidence. Reporting live in studio, Princess Johnny Steverson, News Channel 3.